we get very short notice moves. It could be, uh, I think the shortest we had was four weeks to move from Germany back to UK. We'd only been there for six months. Everyone's working from a, what's going to happen next? Where am I going? We'd been overseas for many years. What was it like back in the UK? And we've just returned from having spent seven months in operations deployed in the Arabian Gulf. Quite challenging, can't it? You just get settled in, get your friends, and then you have to move again. It's important to me to be able to make new friends and also catch up with the schoolwork. Well, it is the most stressful part of the move is to make sure we get the right school. The Armed Forces Covenant exists because these families and these children are, are a nation's responsibility. Forces Connect South East is a regional cross-border partnership of councils across the South East. It's a two-year Covenant grant funded project aimed at making it easier for our Armed Forces communities to access public sector services and to increase understanding and delivery of the promises made within the Armed Forces Covenant. Whilst councils cannot guarantee service families a place at their first choice school, the admissions authorities of maintained and academy schools have a responsibility to arrange a school place before a service family moves to their new home. The service family must provide an official letter declaring a relocation date and a unit postal address or quartering area address. For standard Year R, Year 3 and Year 7 admissions, for families applying to start in September who are moving from elsewhere in England, you must apply to the council where you currently live. If you're living elsewhere in the UK or overseas, then the application will be to the council you are moving to. There are deadline dates for all applications, both civilian and military. If the deadline can't be met, let the admissions team know you are a service family, as they may be able to treat the application as on time. The Army usually does its best to try and make sure that children are moving within the academic year but in-year admissions is, is becoming an issue and is an issue for Army families. For in-year applications or mid-year transfers, they can be made either to the council where the preferred school is or directly to the school. The most important thing for us when um, a family first makes the phone call to say they're moving into the area, um, it's just to listen because often for them it's a, it could involve a really big move, it could, they could be coming to us from Scotland, from America, it's a really anxious time for them. They will need to contact admissions, so we will ask them to do that and make sure that they're getting the right advice because they are the experts. So there are two key pieces of legislation that are considered in relation to in-new admissions outside the normal admissions round. An exception may be possible for a child from a service family background, but there is no guarantee. Firstly, there's the legal infant class size of 30 pupils. An admissions authority may admit a service pupil over this infant class size without the need for an extra teacher. Secondly, some local authorities include a category for children of UK service personnel in their fair access protocol. In your application, consideration may be given to the circumstances of both the child and the school, the child's position on the waiting list, whether there are other service children on the list, and whether there's a reasonable alternative school place available. The school admissions team will do their utmost to accommodate your wishes. However, they may not be able to guarantee your first choice school. You'll be sent a letter with a decision about your child's school. If you refuse to place at any school you applied for, you can ask for your child's name to be added to the waiting list for that school. You also have the right to make an appeal to an independent appeal panel. Your letter will tell you how to do this. And all local authorities are required to publish information about the appeals process on their website. The Armed Forces Covenant isn't there to solve all problems, but it's a promise by the government to their armed forces that they will take this disadvantage into account and work with local authorities to negate that disadvantage as much as possible. Because we're in the military, we shouldn't be disadvantaged through schools, through healthcare provisions, or through 
anything that a normal individual who's not in the military would, would have available to them. So we should, it's not necessarily we're advantaged, but we shouldn't be disadvantaged. Like all parents, we know that serving military personnel and their spouses treat the education of their children with the utmost importance and will do whatever they can to ensure there is no disadvantage, particularly in time to transition from one school to another. All the contributors of this video hope that you found the contents useful and that the information has supported your thinking.